Yeah, hello and welcome back guys to my channel. In today's video, I wanna talk a little bit about uh, Eustachian tube dysfunction. And I wanna give a little bit of a disclaimer very first uh, at the start of this video, because I am not a medical doctor, I'm not a medical professional. So if you do think that you have a problem with your middle ear or inner ear, you might wanna go see your GP or ENT. No, you absolutely absolutely do have to. Today, I'm just going to be talking about the symptoms and um, the extent to which uh, eustachium tube dysfunction can be linked and connected to tinnitus because this is something that Sophia from the mytinnitus.club community, our exclusive online tinnitus membership community, has requested as a video I talk about because she's been dealing with eustach eustachium tube dysfunction um, but let's get into the video and it's fantastic to see you here. Finally, after moving, I've set up my new little YouTube place. I'm gonna put a nice background here and there'll be a lot of videos coming from this place very soon. Yeah, welcome back. So the eustachian tube is actually a very narrow tube in your inner, inner ear, which links the back of the nose to the middle ear. Um, it's normally, um, closed, but it opens when we swallow, yawn, or we chew, right? So the eustachian tube mainly has three functions. It's to protect the middle ear from a pathogen, so from uh, dangerous uh, substances, basically, um, or to whatever is flying around, right? Uh, it's also to ventilate the middle ear, that's its second function. And the third uh, function is to drain secretions from the middle ear cleft. So whatever you have, a little bit of wax or when fluid comes in, the eustachian tube is supposed to drain that and that's the job of the eustachian tube, right? Now, when we talk a eustachian tube dysfunction, in brackets that's called ETD, eustachian tube dysfunction, the there's an inability of the tube to adequately, adequately perform these tasks, right? Um, but it's not entirely known and understood um, how eustachian tube dysfunction actually works, why it happens, and what the results are. But what we do know is that often it can lead to um, pain, fullness in the ear. Uh, for some people, even um, tinnitus can happen, right, if the eustachian tube is not functioning properly. The, uh, another thing that I've been able to research is that eustachian tube dysfunction um, occurs when the, the, the lining of the eustachian tube is swollen, right? So it's like a little bit of a mucus, mucus lining of the tube can swollen or it's, it, it, it's either swollen or it doesn't open or close up properly. And if the tube is then dysfunctional, um, you can also, as I said before, experience like muffled hearing, uh, pain in your ears, uh, tinnitus, reduced hearing, feeling of fullness, right? Which we sometimes get, I sometimes get it after loud noise exposure, um, balance problems, even that. Um, in the long term, it can be a little bit difficult as well, but of course, um, ETD, so eustachian tube dis dis dysfunction, is often something that's uh, relatively short-lived, right? So after a few days, couple of uh, couple of days, um, uh, often through chewing, yawning, or carefully, very carefully, closing your mouth and nose, and blowing into your and blowing air into your nose or your mouth, right? Carefully, I'm saying carefully, you never want to do it with force, right? Because when we do it with force, we can damage things. So make sure that you're very careful about this when you try to equalize the pressure as well. Maybe chew some gum first or, um, right, you know, we all know that when flying, right? The eustachian tube, they open and they, you hear this popping when you fly like, and suddenly it goes like, Buck. and that's when the eustachian tube actually opens and the pressure um, the pressure difference between the eustachian tube and the pressure in the cabin is actually equalized. Now, the eustachian tube dysfunction can even happen if you just simply have a cold. Um, we don't even know that maybe if you, for example, have the COVID virus and you have a COVID infection, um, through the infection of your upper respiratory tract, right? So the upper, the upper respiratory tract infection, that can spread and somehow cause the ETD as well. So that's why people sometimes, when they have a cold, also experience muffled hearing or uh, tinnitus changing or increasing, or actually even having tinnitus and then not having tinnitus at all afterwards. 
um, because that is actually the um, cold uh, causing eustachian tube dysfunction, which is very technical term, right? But it actually just means that your eustachian tube is malfunctioning and there's many ways why a valve could misfunction. As we said before, it could be swollen, could be blocked, could be many different things that lead to um, eustachian tube dysfunction and your eustachian tube not opening and closing properly. So now that we talked about what ETD actually is, so what eustachian tube is actually all about, um, how it happens, I also want to talk a little bit about managing ETD and what you can do when you experience eustachian tube dif dysfunction. Um, the article that I've been basing my research on um, says that ETD is fairly common, especially because people experience it when they have a cold all the time. Um, it's very normal, right? So there are a lot of ways in which you are able, non-surgical ways, so non-invasive ways in which you might be able to tackle, resolve your ETD, or even uh, find out whether ETD um, is what you have in this very moment, right? Um, if we say the number one tip that they give in the article is as a non-surgical tip is that you can uh, swallow, yawn, chew some gum and try to equalize the pressure in the middle ear while not forcing it in any kind of way. Um, so another one is you can try and get um, at the pharmacy or at your local at your local drugstore, you can get a solution and maybe a water salt solution that a uh, nose spray that you um, administer and that can help alleviate the symptoms of ETD as well. And therefore the swelling could go down. Um, maybe sometimes the GP even suggests that you take a, a cortisone based, um, a, a steroids based a nasal spray um, in order to be able to equalize the pressure and allow better fluid drainers. Um, sometimes if it's based on allergies, which is actually also one of the factors, um, you might wanna try and uh, take some antihistamine pills, right? Cetrizine or something like that. I'm not sure what it's called in your country. Of course, consult your GP, um, what kind of, um, what kind of uh, drugs you could take in order to, um, to uh, uh, combat a potential allergy that you might be experiencing and that might be causing you to experience ETD. Um, sometimes even antibiotics, right? If you really have a severe infection, a bacterial infection in the, in the upper respiratory tract, sometimes an an antibiotics might be a way out in order to lower the infection and then be able to um, also uh, remediate the effects of ETD. There is a surgical procedure, however, if there really is ETD for a longer period of time. So if you have eustachian tube dysfunction and your eustachian tubes are not able to equalize the pressure, there is the potential that there's a little stint inserted um, uh, with a balloon to blow up the eustachian tube and then to allow pressure to equalize again. But that, of course, is something that would only um, be administered or only be done if you really experience severe eustachian tube dysfunction over a longer period of time. And of course, it's much better to try and relieve this in a non-surgical way. Yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, so ETD, eustachian tube dysfunction, a relatively common symptom whenever we have a cold or whenever we uh, have a little bit of a, a problem with water in our ears, um, but something being blocked inside the inner ear, it could be temporary ETD. All right, but make sure if you have it for longer experience ETD for longer uh, periods of time, and not only when you have a cold or a, an infection, then definitely go see your GP or your ENT and make sure that it's properly, pro properly um, evaluated on why you're experiencing um, the hearing issues and the potential ETD. Um, if you like this video, subscribe to my channel. We have frequent uh, videos coming out about tinnitus. We have um, a free guide to tinnitus available under the link under this video. So if you click that link or go to www.tinnitus-guide.com, you can check it out. Again, I am no medical professional. I just evaluated some studies and some information I found online in scientific portals. Um, but um, I would like you to know that you have to go to your ENT or GP yourself in order to um, uh, really be sure about what's going on in your ears if you do experience tinnitus or blocked ears or fullness in the ears. So make sure you do that. And finally, I want to invite you to 
join our online tinnitus community we have an online tinnitus membership community i am the host my name is frida i'm deaf on my one ear and i have a hearing aid and a severe tinnitus for over 13 years now i built a community with online management courses for tinnitus but even more so a community where people um can get together, positively support each other on the way towards habituation and learn how to, uh, yeah, actually deal with tinnitus, live with tinnitus in the best way possible to have tinnitus go down in volume and to continue living your life as you choose. I hope this video has been helpful and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye. Mm -hmm.